we know that when we tell our own children stories from long ago or um, Grimm's tales or, or Hans Christian Andersen tales, we know that we're, by telling those stories, we're helping the students find their place in the world. We're helping the students, uh, we're helping our kids, sorry, find where they belong, help them deal with issues such as greed, jealousy, or alienation, those kind of things. We tell those stories, we don't tell our, our kids that this is going to help them deal with greed, but we just hope that those stories will help them work through those ideas in their heads. Okay. <coughs> There's a guy called Sheldon Cashton who wrote a book called The Witch Must Die, and he talks about the witch being the embodiment of those evil things, greed or jealousy, and the witch dying shows that we can overcome those things. He also talks about each fairy tale having four distinct uh, areas. You cross into a weird world. You encounter an evil spirit. You battle them and beat them, the conquest. And then there's a wedding or a feast as a celebration. If you think of Megan, there was the storm which meant she crossed into this strange world where her cow had somehow got to the other side of the river. She encountered the tall, tall, tall man in the long, long, long coat. She did battle with him. She was a wise Welsh woman. She was cleverer than him. She beat him. And then the celebration was that little strut across the river. Yeah. When I first read this, you know what I thought? I thought that's exactly like learning a language. Picture our students. Every lesson is a fairy tale for them. Okay? Every lesson. Picture our students. They come in to the English classroom. <laughs> And they cross into this weird world where no longer is there Croatian written on the walls, but there's things in English written on the wall, love idioms and sayings and fables and Holy Week and Happy Easter. And suddenly it's all strange and weird and there's pictures of red telephone boxes or London taxis and maps of the United Kingdom. And, oh, it's all weird. There's no safety there. And even the words coming out of their mouths sound strange and feel alien. <laughs> and then they encounter the witch. <laughs> not you! You thought that! I didn't say that! You thought that! I didn't say that! Not you! No! The evil in this story isn't you. It's the language that you come across. <laughs> the evil... The e you thought it, I didn't say that. <laughs> the evil is the language that they come across. The wicked goblin that's the present perfect. The devil that's the third conditional. The really evil, wicked witch of the defining and non-defining clauses, please save me! But we know in fairy tales, there's always a fairy godmother. That's you. You're the fairy godmother. You're going to take those scared students by the hand and you're going to lead them through the scary world you're going to give them the drama presentation and the practice activities and they're going to score 8, 9, 10 out of 10. They're going to beat the language. <laughs> and then you play a game with them and there's a celebration at the end of the lesson and the bell rings and they all... <laughs> they all live happily ever after. <laughs> Until next Tuesday when they have to open their classroom door again and it all starts again. So, of course, when we, tell, when we tell fairy tales to our kids, we don't tell them that, this, that Cinderella is helping you deal with alienation problems, that Snow White is helping you deal with jealousy, uh, Hansel and Gretel is helping you deal with greed. But those things are going on in their minds and they're seeing the world through those things and then they're bringing their own experiences in. I wouldn't tell my students that every lesson is a fairy tale, but if I'm telling fairy tales in my lessons, then maybe it's helping my students realise that no matter how hard this strange world of English is, there is a happy ever after. <laughs>